My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the official study guide, version 7, 2025. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together, you and I. Today is our lesson number 12. We are on page number 104. This is a continuation of what we did yesterday. Yesterday we solved five very simple, very, very simple linear equations. And now on the next page, on page number 104, we have some practice problem. That's what they're calling them, practice problem. There are five of them again. And we're gonna knock them down one after the other, five of them. There we go, very simple, very straightforward. Here's the first one. We are told that x minus 17 is equal to 48. The question simply is, how much is x obviously? Well, in order to figure out the x, we have to get rid of this negative 17. How do we get rid of it? Well, it's very simple. Since it's negative 17, you add 17 to both sides. We add 17 to both sides. And this guy also has a positive sign in front of it. Even though it's not written, that's a positive 48. So now we have added 17 to both sides. And on this side, as you can see, negative 17 and positive 17, they're going to kill each other. And we are left with only x. The x comes down. The equal sign is going to come down. And we're left with... 48 plus 17, that's 15, that's 5. Looks like x is equal to 65. It doesn't look like it, it is equal to 65, okay? When I say it looks like it, it ain't a beauty, it ain't a beauty contest. It is 65. I do not know where I picked up the eubonics from. Number 2. In number 2, we have 2x minus 6 is equal to negative 4x. That's what we are told. Let me just confirm it. Yep. And we have to figure out what x is, obviously. Let's see what we can do. So here we have two things. Here we have two things to do. Here we have some x on the right hand side. We need to bring this 4x to this side. Here we have some numbers on the left hand side. We need to bring the numbers to the right hand side. All the all the known quantity. We have to bring to the right side all the unknown quantity, have to go to the left side. Well, let's start with this guy. Since it's negative 4, we can very easily get rid of it by adding 4x to both sides. And remember, even though there is no sign in front of this guy, this is also positive. Now we have to get rid of this negative 6. We can very easily do that again by adding 6 to both sides. So when you add 6 to both sides here, you're going to have to write it on the side here. Because there are no numbers here. If we had, if we had some constant here, we, we would have lined it up with it. There is nothing here, so we just write it on side. That's it, we are done. As you can see, the negative 4a, 4x and the positive 4x, they're going to kill each other. The negative 6 and the positive 6, they're going to kill each other. And we are left with 2x plus 4x, that's 6x. And we are told that 6x is equal to, and only this thing comes down, 6 is six, equal to 6, which means x must be 1. That's all. And if you wanted to, you can very easily verify it. You can very easily verify it. This is what we were told. 2x, 2x, and we are claiming that x is 1. So 2 times 1 minus 6 has to equal negative 4 times 1. Does it? Let's find out. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus negative 6 is negative 4. And that's negative 4. It checks out. That was number 2. Let's do number 3. But let's first change the marker, because I don't like that one. Number three. Number three, we are told. 6x is equal to 19. That's all. 6x is equal to 19. Well, we're not, inter we're not interested in the bloody 6x. We want to know how much is x, 1x. We need to get rid of this 6. We can do that very easily by dividing both sides of the equation by 6. And whenever I end up doing something like this, I always like to bring my equal sign down a little bit so that it lines up nicely here, so that it looks pretty. That's it. We have a 6 on the top, 6 on the bottom. It goes away. And x is equal to 19 over 6. 
And since 19 is more than 6, since the numerator is more than 6, we cannot leave it like this. If the top is more than the bottom, we have to write it in a mixed number. We have to write it in the form of a mixed number. And 19, 19 over 6 can be written as, 19 over 6 can be written as 18 over 6 plus 1 over 6. Would you agree that 19 over 6 is the same as 18 over 6 plus 1 over 6? Of course you would. And 18 over 6 is 3. If we divide top and bottom by 6, we get 3. So the answer is 3 and 1 sixth. That's your final answer. And that was number 3. Let's do number 4. Number 4 says, solve, obviously, 7 fifth x equals to 35. 7 fifth x is equal to 35. But we want to isolate this x. We want to help x by itself. But in front of it, we got a fraction. How do we, get, how do we tackle it? How do we deal with it? Very simple. If you, whenever you have a fraction there, if the coefficient is a fraction, we can get rid of it by simply multiplying it by the reciprocal, 5 over 7. And if you're going to multiply this side by 5 over 7, we have to do the same thing here, 5 over 7. And now we can take care of it because we get 5 on the top, 5 on the bottom. If we divide top and bottom by 5, we can get rid of this 5. Again, we divide top and bottom by 7, we get rid of this guy. Do you understand? And we're left with only x. x is equal to 35 times 5, 7. And now this 35, if it helps you visually, if it helps you visually, this 35 is 35 over 1. So we have one fraction, we multiply the other fraction, see if we can reduce it. We have a 7 on the bottom and we have 35 on the top. 35 is a multiple of 7. 5 7s are 35. If you have 5 7s, 5 of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, that's 35. Let's divide top and bottom by 7. That's how you read it. 5 7s are 35. 5, five sevens are 35. That's how one reads it. 5 sevens are 35. And so are 7 fives. 7 fives are also 35. Of course. Because 5 7 means 5 times 7. And 7 5 means 7 times 5. Of course, 7 times 5 is the same as 5 times 7. Anyway, that's, I'm just babbling. So, 35 reduces. When you divide up and divide by 7, we end up with 25. x equals 25. That's it. Let's do the next one. Number five. Number five. In number five, we have an equation here. 6x minus 9, 3x plus 12. And the question, what they're asking here is that, question is this. Question is, what is, what is an acceptable first step. That's all they want to know. What is an acceptable first step? And of course you have in front of you there are five, uh, four answer choices there and we have to pick one out of those four which, which might be considered as an acceptable first step. Let's talk about it for a second, shall we? Let's pretend that we are going to solve this equation. Or better yet, let's not pretend it. Let's solve the bloody thing. If we were given this equation and if we had to solve for x, what would you do? What's the first thing you would do? Well, there are only two possibilities, there are only two options we have here. And when I say two options, that mean, I don't mean two options as in one or the other. There are two things we have to do here. That's what I meant to say. There are two things that need to be done. We need to bring the numbers to the right hand side. The constant, the known quantity has to go on the right hand side. And the unknown quantity has to go to the left hand side. This is the positive 3x. And that's a negative 9. So to get rid of this negative 9, we have to add 9 to both sides. That's one thing we could do, but that is not one of the answer choices. We just added 9 to both sides. Add 9 to both sides. And if you look at the answer choices, that is not what they have in one of the, one of the answer choices. Well, let's look at the other part, because there are two things we need to do. We need to bring 9, we need to get rid of this constant, negative 9, we need to get rid of the negative 9, bring it to the other side, and at the same time, we need to bring the unknown quantity to this side, which we'll do by subtracting 3x. Let's subtract 3x from both sides. 
So the other option is either either do this or subtract 3x from both sides. Now I want you to understand that when I say either this, either do I do this or that in the context of the problem itself, because if, if that is not the option, this must be the option in the answer choices, and it is. But of course, if we were actually solving the equation, this is no longer or. We'll have to do both this and that. We have to do this, which we have done. We have added 9 to both sides. And we'll have to subtract 3x from both sides because we want to get rid of this 3x. So it's not an or. It's we have to do this step and that step. Which one do you do first? That's what they mean by that. We have to do this step and that step. Which step do you do first? That's what they mean by that. You can do either one of them. You could do either one of them as the first step and it would be considered perfectly acceptable. The only problem is this is not one of the answer choices. This is one of the answer choices. Answer choice C says subtract 3x from both sides. There you go. Answer is C. Because they did not give that as an option. We're going to continue with this thing. Why stop right here? Let's continue with this thing since we have it in front of us. Let's solve it. So the answer to this problem is C. The first acceptable first step, subtract 3x from both sides as we have done here. And we're going to continue with it. Okay? So this 6x that you see, let's, let's erase the question number so it doesn't cause confusion. That 6x that we see here, it actually has a sign in front of it. It's a positive sign. Just like I inserted a positive sign here. If there is nothing there, it's positive. So now we have a negative 9 and a positive 9. They're going to kill each other. That was the whole point. That was the whole bloody point because we wanted to get rid of it. Similarly, a positive 3x and negative 3x, they're going to knock each other out. And we're left with here on this side, positive 6x, positive 6x, and negative 3x. That's going to be positive 3x. And this equal sign comes down. And here we have 9 plus 12 plus 9, which is 21. We want the x by itself. Let's divide both sides by 3. 3 is going to go away and x is equal to 7. There you go. x is equal to 7. And if you wanted to, we can very quickly verify it. It doesn't take that long. Let's go, we can very quickly verify it. What we were told, what was given to us is that 6x, and we are claiming that x is 7. 6x, and we are claiming that x is 7. 6 times 7, minus 9. We were told that this quantity has to equal that quantity, 3x, 3 times 7, because that's what we're claiming. We're claiming x is 7, plus 12. And let's see if it checks out. 6 times 7, 6 7 is a 42. 42 minus 9, 42 minus 10 would have been 32. 42 minus 9, therefore, would be 33. Let's see what we get here. Keep your fingers crossed. 7 times, 7 times 3 is 21, plus a 12. There we go. 21 21 plus 10 would have been 31, th therefore 21 plus 12 is 33. It checks out. This is also 33. This answer is correct. That was question number 5 on that page. That was the last question. And that is the end of the topic. The topic was, the topic being linear equations. Simple linear equations. We did 5 yesterday, we did 5 today. And that's, that's, all, that's, the all, that's all you're going to see in the exam. They're not going to be very complicated. The linear equations that they ask us to solve in the exam, they are very straightforward, very simple. Just pay attention, bring all the unknown quantities to the left hand side, bring all the known quantities on the right hand side, and you're done. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.